When you or people in your organization doubt the quality of a measurement device or a whole measurement system, please do an r and &R. It'll help you and it's not that hard. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And in this video, let's talk about when you do a gauge r and studies. Now, there is a whole use case and I've talked about that before. When you are introducing SPC or CPK, so these type of variation statistics that you use either to control your process or to show the quality and capability of your process to customers. Almost always, when you do SPC or CPK, you would like to also do an r, &R on your measurement systems, just because it, the quality of your measurement system has a big impact on those statistical indicators. But the main reason that I also want to stress with you, when should you do a gauge r, &R studies, is when there is doubt about the quality of your measurement system. So if you have completely different results coming from your different shifts about the product, now maybe they are indeed making it in a different way. Now, maybe the operators are simply not good enough in one of the shifts and they're making a different product. They're, they're using a different standard and they're, they're really making defects or at least different products. But also, somebody may have raised the issue of yeah but it's so difficult to test it and you know it's almost impossible to get a good measurement how do we know exactly how long the box is exactly how many holes there should be in a plane it's you know, it's just a difficult way to measure right? so if you have any discussions on the definitions of your quality standards the interpretation of a product if it meets quality standards and you see this a lot really a lot in things like sensory sort of analysis where you taste at some, uh, taste something or you look at a color uh, pattern or it is about, maybe not sensory, but are uh, things scratched or not? Those are things that are difficult to measure. But even in sort of simple measurements, you can see it a lot when you just see that it's a couple millimeters longer or uh, it's always a bit heavier or uh, it always has a higher percentage of some substance in certain shifts or during the night versus the day. And this can be your production, definitely. But as soon as somebody raises, and that could, could include yourself, but as soon as somebody raises the topic of, wait, but is the measurement system good enough? Just go and test it. And gauge r, &R is a brilliant way to test it. So the idea is that you've got your product and maybe these are the actual products made, but maybe this is the actual product made. We don't know because we only get the observer data. Now, this observer sees that our product is too wide. This observer sees a perfect product. This observer sees that it is too deep. So we've got differences, right? Do we actually have different products or not? So what is the actual quality of our product? Right now, our quality system says that we've got a whole bunch of defects, two thirds in this one. But we know that we only see what the operators or the laboratory staff, the quality people, but the assessors see. And that has an element of the product difference, probably also has an element of the assessor difference. And that is what gauge r, r is all about. Can we repeat and reproduce that same measurement? So when we do have the same product, will different people, if we really know that's the same one, will different people, both when they get that same product sort of randomly in front of themselves and they test it a couple of times, will they at least get the same result every time? That's repeatability. But also, will assessor B get at least on average the same results as assessor A, right? So even if there is some difference between the measurements that assessor A does, they repeat it four times or so and they get slightly different results, we sort of expect that operator B, assessor B will also get different results when, when they also assess that same product four times. But is the average between them the same? Then it is repeatable. Now, those are the two things in Gage R&R. I'll not go into all of the details of Gage R&R 
if you want that i've got some other videos on that also i have a full course on how you set up gauge r r including the sampling the calculations the interpretation how you go to improvement really good if you have any doubts on any of the measurement systems in your organization or you just want to boost that gauge r r skill get that course and what it will show you is that actually doing a gauge r r study isn't even that difficult and um, there are some products that spoil that cannot be kept for long and then you will have some practical problems for sure it'll become more difficult but many tests that we do are not that expensive and not that difficult and i will assure you if you have a test system so the analysis itself that doesn't destroy your product or your product is just nice and stable setting up an r r studies really isn't as much trouble as many people think yes you have to get your assessors some time to do more assessments than usually but they have to analyze a whole bunch of somewhere in the area of about 30 to 40 analyses to do this test and each of them has to do that but that can quite easily be arranged and think of it in this way when you're getting this result and you have some idea that the product isn't that bad actually are you going to waste two-thirds of your production because your assessors cannot really assess the product or are you going to waste waste a few hours of each of them with a couple of analyses and get an objective result right? it'll help you so much because a structured repeatability reproducibility studies will show you what is actually the the difference right the variation in your production in the machine itself the repeatability part so how difficult is it to do such a such an analysis and, and get the same result and do i have operators who get different results from others because the fun part is here uh, they, they all three have a different thing right but usually if there's an operator to operator difference you will see that one out of four has a completely different value from the others then you know where to focus if you have a poor repeatability you know that you can you need to do things with the measurement system right but you can either do something with the sampling or the device itself or you can make subgroups and then average a number of results and again have a trustable system so it teaches you so much and i can assure you once you get the hang of gauge r and r and you stop being frightened of the formulas and the setup it is a very manageable process so go and get that course or just download my free template and watch a couple other videos if you already have uh, some experience in six sigma and setting up laboratory tests and ring trials and things like that if you have set up ring trials you can do a gauge r and r studies as well right so th then with the free content that's available also here on YouTube and, uh, and my template, you will be fine. But go and do that. Discuss it within your organization every time the questions are raised on the validity of the measurement itself. Just solve the question. We've got a great tool for that. Okay. I will see you on my course site, hopefully. But also, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit that like button. Drop me a comment. How is this done in, in your organization? And for now, I wish you the best of luck measuring and improving your measurement systems. And don't forget to also enjoy the continuous improvement journey.